Your enemy is my enemy. His name is Sefin. And what does he want? Revenge. Me. The Bond films have a rich heritage of um, shooting all of their extraordinary action for real. And, um, and this film was absolutely no different. There was visual effects in it, but they were not up front and center. So for instance, in the Norway lake sequence, the production actually went to Norway and they filmed on a real lake, a real frozen lake in Norway. But as with any production, when you shoot throughout the day, the footage looks different from shot to shot. There was kind of one or maybe two shots which everyone was happy with the uh, lighting conditions. We had a task to try and match the lighting across all of the all of the shots and in order to do that we simulated a cg world where the lighting was exactly the same and then we we used a number of techniques to copy and mimic um, what we were seeing in the in the computer so rather than we we still used the photography and built on top of it rather than replacing it whole hog but we used the simulation to tell us what that should look like the director, Kerry Fukunaga, was very keen to keep as much of the stuff that he had shot as he could. That included the people, that included the, the buildings, the trees even, but the trees didn't have snow on. So each tree had to be, particularly for the close-up trees, they had to be modelled in in the in CGI uh, to look exactly like the trees that were there. We put snow on them digitally, but then lifted the digital snow off and put them on top of the real trees that were in the plate. That was the mantra really for the whole film. Keep what we shot and augment and add. We had a, you know, an amazing special effects team that really did, and a stunt team that really did jump um, Land Rovers um, through the air. And when we needed to replace things like that for lighting or for filling in the background we kept exactly that stunt so on a james bond film no one really wants to resort to cgi stunts and, and things like that so they they really do capture everything in camera but when they for sort of timing reasons they take a chunk out of the middle of a chase suddenly the continuity of where those vehicles are and where they need to be sort of goes out the window. That's when we do come in and we try and we find a plate that maybe um, has got the Toyota in it, which is Bond's car, but it doesn't have the Land Rovers uh, there. So it had a motorbike. So we'll erase the motorbike, but we'll put the Land Rovers in. And that's the kind of work that we are doing. It's not very flashy work to put in the grass that was completely chewed up by the stunt team and to replace that but it does need to be it does need to look really accurate and the attention to detail that our environments team had to go to to model the tufts of the grass that matched the scottish um highlands where they were shooting um unless we go to those sort of lengths you don't end up believing it and it all feels like a bit of a fudge and we're not interested in fudging it um in you know 2022